Two popular U.S. cruise lines are removing their mask mandates in the coming days. The Cruise Line International Association is ticked off at the CDC, and they're claiming that they're not paying attention to basic imperial evidence. We'll let you know what's going on. Plus, Celebrity Cruise Lines has ticked off the U.S. Navy down in Key West. All this coming up on Midships. Hey, hey, welcome to the Midships YouTube channel. I'm your Captain Corey, and thank you so much for stopping by the channel today. Well, we just stopped in Turks and Caicos here. I'm on board the Carnival Magic. It's like our fourth day on a six-day cruise. It's been a wonderful time. The weather could not be nicer. Make sure you check out my Instagram to see some of the pictures and videos I took today in Turks and Caicos. Now, there's tons of cruise news, and we're going to start with Royal Caribbean. Just like Carnival did with Australia, so does Royal Caribbean with Hong Kong cruises. Let's learn more from TravelMole.com. Royal Caribbean has canceled all remaining cruise to nowhere sailings out of Hong Kong for the year. The company decided to scrap sailings after the Hong Kong government has further extended their COVID-19 measures. This affects several cruises aboard Spectrum of the Seas until mid-March. Guests affected will receive a full refund. The cruise line, however, is hopeful of returning to Hong Kong in the near future, when the local situation becomes a little more certain. So some kind of tough news for Royal Caribbean. That's not the last we're gonna hear about them today. And speaking of tough news, the US Navy, they're kind of ticked off at celebrity cruises for something they did down in Key West. You may remember down in Key West, they're protesting cruise ships as they come into port. It's already crazy and stressful enough for the crew of these ships. Now they got the Navy on their back. Let's learn more. From MSN.com, courtesy of the Miami Herald, by Gwen Filso. Cruise ships keep coming to Key West, but the U.S. Navy said this one crossed the line. This was more than a monster truck just trying to squeeze into a small parking spot. A celebrity cruise ship that stopped in Key West over the weekend was jutting out into a passageway used by the U.S. Navy. And Naval Air Station Key West said the ship partially blocked the entrance to the Navy's Truman Harbor. By exceeding the boundary line, the 1,004-foot celebrity apex's mooring at the privately run Pier B had a bigger fallout than your typical bad parking job in a South Beach garage. Trice Denny, a spokesperson from the Naval Air Station, said the following, any activity that restricts or prohibits vessels transit in or out of the harbor impacts our defense mission capabilities here. We need all that opening space to safely maneuver vessels in and out of the area. The Naval Air Station says they've drafted a notice of the violation to the Florida Department of Environmental Protection. The notice is working its way through the Navy's administrative process. The next step will be up to the state, according to the Navy. While that sounds just a little bit more serious than the trouble Royal Caribbean found themselves in earlier this week when they blocked a SpaceX launch. Well, it's about time to talk about those two really popular U.S. cruise lines that are kind of ditching the masking policy. But before we do that, I want to remind you, all the articles referenced in today's episode are linked in the description below this video. While you're down there at the very top, there's a link to the Midship's Instagram page. And I'm not going to give you the usual spiel because Corey from Turks and Caicos is going to take it from here. Well, hey, Midship's family. It's Captain Corey speaking. And I want to remind you, Midship's is on Instagram. You can follow us there. It's just Midship's Cruise. I'm out here in Grand Turk in the Turks and Caicos. And if you follow me on Instagram, I've got a great guide to the entire port here. So I encourage you to give me a follow and check it out. Last but not least, I want to invite you to check out my Amazon Influencers page. There's a link towards the top of my description. There you can find all the cruise swag I take with me on every single cruise. This cable organizer, it's pretty sweet. Those little magnetic hooks you see right there over my shoulder, pretty sweet as well. Most of these things cost 10 to 20 bucks, and just clicking on the links does help support my work and this channel just a little bit. Thank you so much. Now let's talk about Royal Caribbean and their masking policy on board their ships. From CruiseCritic.com by Aaron Saunders. Royal Caribbean Cruise Line has quietly revised their onboard mask policy, announcing now that masks will no longer be required in areas of the vessel designated for vaccinated passengers only, as of sailings departing after February 14th. The update, which was made to Royal Caribbean's Healthy Sail Center webpage, follows news from Norwegian Cruise Line, which announced Tuesday they would scrap onboard mask use for sailings departing from March 1st. We'll put a pin in that. We're going to talk a little bit more about NCL's policy change as well. Royal Caribbean still requires masks to be worn indoors and when you can't physically distance outside. Voyages departing up to and including February 14th will still require masks be worn in all areas of the ship. 
while sailings departing after that date will revert back to the masking policy Royal had in place last summer. This policy allows masks to be removed once you're in an area of the ship designated for vaccinated people only. This includes select bars, lounges, the ship's casino, and designated dining venues. And it's important to note that masks may still be required in your port of call, so don't forget to take one with you. Royal Caribbean becomes the latest cruise line to relax their onboard policies surrounding COVID-19, in line with what's happening in many U.S. and Canadian states and provinces as the Omicron wave gradually subsides. And I guess since we mentioned it in passing, it's a pretty good time to talk about Norwegian Cruise Line and their masking policy changes as well. And we're going to do it from a source you might not expect, royalcaribbeanblog.com. It's run by Matt Hotchberg. Highly suggest you check it out. Norwegian Cruise Line has also announced it's relaxing their COVID-19 protocols beginning March 1st, perhaps signaling a change for the cruise industry. Uh-huh, I think you're onto something, Matt. On Tuesday, NCL updated their safe sail health and safety protocol. Wow, that is a lot of, uh, a lot of words, very alliterative. For cruises sailing March 1st and beyond, in it, they changed their masking and vaccination requirements, effectively reducing how strict they are. And Norwegian has definitely been the strictest there is. Like Royal Caribbean, NCL had tightened their protocols in light of the Omicron variant. Here's a look at the major changes that NCL has announced. Norwegian announced that for cruises on or after March 1st of this year, you'll no longer have to wear a face mask anywhere on board. And in addition, another change is NCL will now allow children under five years old to sail on board if they're not vaccinated beginning on March 5th. Now that is a huge departure from NCL because as you may know, they're the cruise line that really spearheaded this fully vaccinated only cruise. Their crew, their passengers, you were not able to set foot on one of Frank Del Rio's ships if you didn't receive your vaccine. Well, now as long as you're a little kid at least and you're maybe not eligible right now to get it, you can cruise now. So maybe we're actually gonna start seeing kids on some NCL ships again. And the other big change for NCL cruisers is around testing. In addition, NCL will now require its passengers to test at home before their cruise, like every other cruise line has already been doing. And they're doing this as an effort to speed up their check-in process. The article goes on to foreshadow what we might already know. Is NCL's change a harbinger of what's to come for Royal? Maybe. Well, our answer is already here. Yes, it is a harbinger of what's to come for Royal, and most likely other cruise lines as well. And perhaps the most important harbinger of things to come for Royal Caribbean, their CEO Jason Liberty was recently quoted as saying COVID levels on board their ship have now decreased to lower than they were pre-Omicron. So that is fantastic news coming out of Royal Caribbean. Now we need to talk about some drama that's kind of brewing between the Cruise Line International Association, or CLIA, and the US CDC. They got some beef over protocols that the CDC says makes sense. CLIA says that makes no sense at all. Let's learn more from cruiseindustrynews.com. CLIA blasts new CDC cruise program as discriminatory. CLIA has voiced their displeasure with the CDC's new COVID program. If you want to check this program out for yourself, this article is linked in the description below. There is a hyperlink right here. It'll take you right to the page. And CLIA is quoted as saying, regrettably, upon initial review, the latest CDC guidance appears to be out of step with actual public health conditions on cruise ships and unnecessary in light of societal trends away from more restrictive measures. That's a nice way of saying it doesn't make any sense. They went on to say, we're confounded by the CDC's imposition of even more complex and unwarranted measures which ignore empirical evidence that the industry's protocols have provided a greater level of COVID mitigation than most any other setting in the world, I might add. The CDC's guidance for multi-tiered cruises is counterproductive to consumers, creating market confusion between the various tiers and potentially unworkable in practice. CLIA and its members are fervently devoted to preventing the spread of COVID and protecting passengers, crew, and the general public against adverse health consequences. The record of this unwavering commitment is extensive and irrefutable, according to CLIA. Against this backdrop, we continue to be dismayed by the CDC's decision to maintain any travel health notice for cruising. CDC has long recognized the paramount importance of vaccination in protection against COVID-19, and the vaccination rate on cruise ships is close to 100%. Whereas on land, it's only 63%. It seems unnecessarily discriminatory against cruising to maintain that the chances of getting COVID on a cruise is very high 
even if you're up to date with your COVID vaccines. This discounts the importance of what the CDC has otherwise promoted as the single most important touchstone for public health and safety. Uh-oh, that sounds like fighting words to me, but honestly, it wouldn't be the first time the CDC's contradicted themselves in the past couple of years. They've confused the heck out of me a few times with some of the decisions they've made, but once again, I'm just a guy that talks on the internet. I'm not a medical doctor. Go ahead and leave your opinions down in the comments below. While you're down there, do me a huge favor. Smash that thumbs up button. You wish you could cruise with me here on the Carnival Magic. Thanks so much for stopping by the channel today. Until next time, we'll see ya on the midship.